Three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your feared, extremist, right-wing, heart-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. Good morning, planet Earth. We are broadcasting to you live, for the most part, from uh, the CNHT studios in beautiful Concord, New Hampshire. It is Saturday, November 21st. Uh, Thanksgiving is next week. As a reminder, we will not be here next Saturday. Uh, we will maybe perhaps put up some program from the past for you to listen to if you must have your Grok Talk fix. But we will be enjoying the holiday weekend with our families. Uh, but you're, you're free to enjoy the weekend or do whatever you like. Uh, the Internet's a big place. There's lots to do. And if you happen to have a spare moment you want to check out some uh, past programs, you can do so at GraniteGrock.com or on Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, iTunes, iHeartRadio. And you can also find our work on YouTube and, of course, Ustream. Today on the program, we will be welcoming uh, a couple of folks. Uh, Aaron Day, chairman of the Republican Liberty Caucus of New Hampshire, has uh, posed a challenge. If the New Hampshire state Republicans pass Medicaid expansion, then uh, he says he's going to start a third-party bid against Kelly Ayotte to rob votes so that she loses her Senate seat. We'll be talking to him about that. Roger Wilkins, who actually operates out of the office behind us here, uh, is the New Hampshire Director of Citizens Concerned Veterans for America, sorry, uh, Concerned Veterans for America uh, in New Hampshire. We're going to talk about some VA reform. And then a gentleman we've had on the program before, Jim Simpson. He's an investigative journalist and author of the Red Green Axis. He's going to come in and uh, he's not going to come in. He's going to call in and we're going to talk to him about refugee resettlement, the current situation with the Syrians, and uh, anything else that happens to come up on that topic. Also expected this morning is Don Ewing, who's going to come fill in at some point, hopefully, and uh, we, we hope he makes it. Uh, we'd love to have him here. And, of course, the gentleman who is aiding and abetting uh, in the production of the program today is Mr. Mike Rogers. Thanks for uh, coming in here and getting in early to help set up. Aiding, aiding abetting, and troublemaking everywhere and always. That's right. So that's what we're here for. And I've been a little bit of everywhere and always this last couple of weeks because I've been on vacation from real work. But somehow politics filled all the gaps. It's like work. Yeah, it is. They've made it like work. It's not just a hobby anymore. So, all right, well, let's start with our WTF, and I think the biggest one's probably uh, Ben Carson. He came here. Uh, you have a post that's going to be going up. You've already kind of hinted at some of the stuff that was going on this week. He came to New Hampshire on the, was it the last day to register? The very was... last day to file. I've called it remain day at the State House. Uh, there was a uh, a guy in a sweater from the city of brotherly love talking about love, peace, and the people and the police being nice to each other. Uh, there was a old Southern Democrat. I thought at first old-fashioned. Then I read his, his uh, uh, policy platform. It's so far to the left that it would make Bernie Sanders jealous. <laughs> uh, I shall post links. Morning, Don. And uh, Vermin Supreme came in, uh, talked about his uh, his platform, which was no hope, no change, and bitter disappointment, <laughs> but how he was going to create the pony economy and ponytopia. Yes. Not sure whether that means everybody uh, shoveling up horse droppings from the street. Uh, he didn't go that far. Uh, he also had a empty holster strapped to his uh, Wellington boot headgear, complaining that due to the Ben Carson security uh, screening, he was unable to open carry into the state house. Hey, Don. You can't All hear. Don fun. can't hear anything. He's on three. Can you uh, turn him up a little bit? One, two. How's that? Can you hear anything now? I can hear Don now. Can you hear us? Maybe he's not. Maybe it's in. just me. Maybe it's just me. Heaven knows I'm deaf. You don't hear anything? Okay. Well, let's follow his cord and see if he's plugged in. He should be, but anyway, because uh, we can definitely hear him out of the board. So, yeah, uh, yeah ben, came, Sorry. ben came to town. He didn't have a great experience. Um, no, it, it was pretty interesting. Uh, first of all, there was a pre-game show at Tandy's Top Shelf. The folks over there said he didn't make it to that. Um, there seemed to be an interminable wait at the State House, too, even though the Carson bus was right outside. I think so. You think so? You think you can hear us? 
Yeah, okay, well, it's on max uh, for that outlet. Can't quite tell you why it doesn't work so well. Anyway, so no, keep going. Um, you know, that, that, was, that was interesting in and of itself. He worked the crowd down the hallway, very affable, very personable, charming as always, came in, very smoothly handled the filing, and on to the inner sanctum where the press were waiting to grill him. First up was the question about uh, Donald Trump and saying that there ought to be a database of Muslims so we can track them all. And Carson immediately responded that there ought to be a database on everybody and further expanded. You know, so what about citizens? Oh, we've all, we should already have a database of those. So there you have it. <laughs> Whatever else he is, uh, when he thinks off the cuff, the Constitution is not uh, attached anywhere. <laughs> That's not good. No. So my, my long term observation of Dr. Carson is he's a good man and obviously a gifted surgeon. Uh, and uh, you know, in, in great in his specialty, good man, fine wife, good Christian, all those things. Uh, but any time you just ask him a question and he responds off the cuff, it doesn't come out anything close to conservative or constitutional. Uh, and uh, basically, I think that he should stick to his specialty or his golf. So course. they basically took a guy off the street without any, you know, um, constitutional studies or knowledge or any of that stuff, and. He uh, somebody stretched his fifteen minutes of fame, and it's getting a little ragged. Well, I mean, he did. A lot of people pushed him and pushed him and pushed him and pushed him and pushed him to try and run. And I think initially he had no interest in it. But you know, when people with money and and influence and and a lot of voices keep nagging you to do something, I mean, I think if they just let him be, yeah, well, he never would have entered the when race. People, when people who got money by selling your name, which is basically the same way he got money, by selling his name and his books, mm-hmm. uh, push you hard enough and you get into the race, and then you find out that all there is is the marketing. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what it came uh, down you know, to. Um, like I said, he's a really nice guy. If I played golf, I'd probably be happy to play golf with him. I'd be, probably be happy to go to his church. Could be his publisher said, hey, you know, if you run for president, we'll sell more books. Uh, you know, but uh, let's I'll, let, let's put this way, guys. After a couple of weeks following politicians around and going to several filings, I can tell you that Jim Gilmore is way more qualified to be president than Ben Carson. He was governor. Uh, well, and and he's got a whole lot better policy positions, much better thought out, and he can sp- and he can spout them if you tap him on the shoulder, and he doesn't go off into the weeds. Well, yes, yeah, he has plenty of experience in government. He understands both the federal and the state level. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and, that, and you could say that makes him an establishment guy, except he's also got a good set of policies, which are uh, all about economic growth and national security, which actually makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you go chasing Dr. Carson's web page, the policy pages are pretty thin, to put it mildly. And the rest of it is what he says when you ask him a question. Well, as you pointed out, he's already peaked. He's starting to decline. Uh, as we pointed out in the news read, he is now uh, third in New Hampshire, maybe lower than that, maybe yeah, fourth. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, definitely uh, on uh, the slide. At, at best, he's level with Cruz, who is definitely rising. Uh, Nationally, yes. yes. In New Hampshire, though, he's below Cruz. Yeah. So, And, and uh, you know, one of my uh, the phrases I coined is slowly, slowly, catchy, trumpy. Uh, as opposed to catchy monkey, which is, you know, by being stealthy and cautious. I think Ted Cruz is going to catch up with Trump over the next few months. Uh, I don't know yet whether there's going to be any kind of alliance between those two guys. That would be an interesting speculation. But I think that that Cruz is doing all the right things. He's building the organization slowly. He's got more small donors than anybody except for maybe the Tea Party group behind uh, Carson. Uh, and uh, he, he's he got the funding to run his organization, and he does so in a very lean manner. Don? Hi. So, I've rambled for too long. Don, welcome. What do you think? Uh, good morning. Um, you know, our focus has to be on the primary, where, of course, I would prefer Ted Cruz as, as well, I think. Uh, I, however, wonder whether or not the establishment's going to line up and support him. I mean, I realize... Everybody held up their hands, but uh, I think we're very, very vulnerable in the general election for Republican establishment to say, well, you know, Hillary Clinton will keep uh, all the good times rolling and, and fill our coffers. It's not who I picked, but uh, you mean it's going to be... You mean they'd Goldwater him? Yes. Uh, I'm concerned about that, and I'm also concerned that if we were to get a, a pres- 
President Cruz, who, uh, which I personally would prefer, how are we going to be able to make the? Ch- how is he going to be able to make the changes that I think we all want in a legislature with a, a Congress which where the Senate is back in the hands of the Democrats? I mean, they've stopped anything constructive from being done with the Republicans in a majority. Well, he can do a lot to undo the executive nonsense. He, he, he can do a lot do because that. he can enforce the existing laws and he can rescind executive orders and... Get rid of the czars. He, yeah, and, if, if he takes and care and of the bureaucratic faithful, stuff at yeah. the EPA. And, am, am I on, Steve? You're, you're on, yeah. yeah. If he takes care to simply faithfully execute the laws, he can cut the departments down to size dramatically because they are nowhere near faithfully executing the laws. So I think that's that's something he can do without action by Congress. Uh, but the other thing is he could borrow a page out of Fiorina's book. And in my weekly week, weekly radio address, I will name the issue of the week and ask you to press one for yes, two for no on your smartphone. There's an app for that. <laughs> I'm just quoting. But, uh, uh, you, you, she has said that, yes. Yeah, you get the point. Uh, no, I, yeah, and, you, I, you know, the, and the, I agree with that. If he, if he does his weekly fireside chats yeah. <laughs> or something and he gets the people behind him uh, but I don't but Harry Reid doesn't care what and you know and the Democrat leaders whoever's going to take over they don't care what the people want uh, just like most of the uh, establishment Republicans don't say, otherwise Dem- we would have the border closed yeah 20 30 years ago right Dem- Democrat leaders like Mitch McConnell <laughs> yes yeah, right we uh, are going to take a really short break hang on and we'll be right back 